What's going on, everybody? Today, we're gonna be doing a couple things to the six. And I really ain't done no content on it because ain't nothing been wrong with it. But today, I am going to be doing three main things. I'm gonna be doing an oil change. I have a little leak on the air rod system. And I have a clunk from the passenger side rear, which I'm thinking may be the lower strut mount. It started off a little bit, but now it's quite frequent. So this is a video of doing some maintenance. So let me get the water. Let me get the water. Let me get the motor oil up temp a little bit. Start with the oil change first, and then we will go to the rear of the car afterwards. So let's get the old girl going and every time it gets cold this doggone um, airlift controller does this little stupid mess right here so yeah let the car air up hopefully my controller uh, stops glitching and then when I come back we'll be chained on this bad boy so this is how I load my car on the ramps I got, I think those are two by sixes, and I got them kind of layered, and then up on the ramp. Yes, the car is bad, but in order for it to have a decent ride with pressure and also a decent height for airing up and for airing out, that's about as high as what it goes. So just part of the game, just because my car is on bag doesn't mean that it lifts up 14 feet in the air. Just like that, no fuss, no muss. I just got whatever was on sale. Uh, what do I have? I got Mobile One 5W20. Mazda in the US says run 0W20, but I opt for the 5W20 and I got the Mobile One filter. I think this one was like $39.99. For safety, I always make sure that I got my wheel chalk on the wheel. That way to keep anything from rolling back. I also pull up the e-brake and you know, just make sure it's in part. I know for the position that my drain is in, that I need uh, my screwdriver sometimes. You can see it. But I have the, the Famuto drain valve and I know for where my, my for, I know for where it is, that sometimes I need to use my screwdriver because it's not in the ideal uh, spot. So I don't know what y'all can see, but I press it back towards the middle of the car and then I use my screwdriver. What was it forward? I think it's back. And I use my screwdriver for leverage just to turn it. Oh, this is dripping all over the camera. Here you go. all this I got oil all over my dog on camera I'm gonna take my my oil filter cup and I'm going to remove this Fram filter that I did not want I've been using this oil filter trick for a while and it works awesome to just simply keep mess down because instead of the oil going all over your hands and stuff, like it just, it works really, really well. You just keep the overall mess down. And just like that, any oil that water came out is in the cup. Take my Mobile One Extended Life filter. I need to make sure that the O-ring from the previous oil filter is not on there and it's not. Take our pre-filled oil filter, twist it on there, and then we, is it gonna go? Is it straight? And there we go. 
that's going to pour all five quarts in for this quart particular the book says 4.8 but for whatever reason uh these five quart containers sometimes hardly ever get it up to full it'll still read low so i just pour all five in the car got 237,000 miles on it you know i'm not worried about a extra little two tenths of a quart because it's probably going to use it just a little bit oil in funnel off your oil cap I like to make sure that my oil cap actually faces towards the front. Oil change is done. And then I'm going to back the car off the ramps and then back it back the car up so we can get the rear passenger side wheel off and we can look at what's going on. And if it is actually the lower shock mount, because that's what I think it is. I didn't show y'all this is the oil filter in the cup so all that oil that probably would have came out is just in this cup chilling so I just take this off and just pull the oil and the filter because the filter is going to be upside down take that put that there I take my cup put it to the side and boom nice and easy and clean it's gonna be the wheel we're pulling off the rear passenger so since I'm, I'm going to jack that side up, like I said, the car is in park with the e-brake. But just for a little bit of reassurance, I'm going to chalk the front tire, get it jacked up. I'm going to deflate the bag and then see if the issue is what I think it is, which is the lower shock mount bolt. All right. Wheel off. And I will tell y'all, anytime I work under y'all car, make sure you have a jack stand under your jack. Do as I say, not as I do, or something like that. So I'm thinking that the noise that I'm hearing is coming from the lower shock mount boat right there. So I don't know if y'all can see, but I have my 19 mil and let's see if it is loose. Oh yeah, it ain't all that tight. If I can move it with just my hand it ain't all that tight so I'm thinking this is where my noise was coming from so <clears throat> let me get my hammer get this bad boy a couple of taps get it tightened up and hope that noise goes away And I know that if my noise goes away, that clunking that I hear at kind of low speeds, I know what it was. Let's just take a look around. My exhaust that I welded still looks okay. The heat wrap, the lost none of its color, but it looks okay. I wish I'd gone up a little bit higher uh, to bring the exhaust up a little bit more, like another inch and a half. Uh, but otherwise, everything looks fine. The air, the airlift struts are dry, so they're not leaking, which is good. The wiring looks good. Brake line looks good. This uh, Godspeed camera arm is seized up, so it can't be adjusted. So I'll see if I order some cork sport ones. Uh, the airlift bags look good. So everything under the back, anytime I get under my car, I make sure everything looks good. Uh, the lines look good. Everything looks solid. Trail arm bushing or toe arm bushing looks good. So anytime you're under your car, it's always inspected and just kind of see that everything looks good. Then next, we're going to pull this stuff out the trunk because we have an air leak right there and I can hear it 
So that means it's a pretty bad air leak if I can hear. But it drains my tank from 150 to 70 or below every night and every time I go to work. So that's going to be next. All right, and this area is going to be the area that we are going to be focused on because I don't know if you can hear it. Let me get the mic a little bit closer. But we're over here in this area somewhere. Can y'all hear that? That's what we call an air leak, ladies and gentlemen. And this is what we call soapy water. And guess what soapy water does with air? It bubbles. So let's start checking some fittings for bubbles. No bubbles. Okay, so it's coming from this fitting right there. I don't know if y'all can see it. You see that bubble? So that's where the leak is coming from. I said, I can hear it. You don't want to release these fittings unless the tank is empty. Uh, so I'm going to drain the tank. And then I'm going to make this line probably just a little bit longer and see if we can get a better connection and see if that stops the leak. So in my oh shit kit, I have my line cutter, which we're going to use today. Uh, I keep plenty of line in my spare tire along with a bunch of other, you know, oh shit parts, you know, extra braided lines, filters. But the majority of my oh shit kit is going to be in here. You know, zip lines. Oh, I might even put some of that, um, some of that air brake antifreeze in my tank. This is going to be empty. So I'm going to leave this out. Uh, but what I'm looking for is my Schrader valve tool. Because that's how we're going to empty the tank today. So my tank drain line runs right below my daughter's car seat and you can't even see it because I have it tucked under the seat out of the way so anytime I go to get gas I just I pull this out I take my little straighter tool the blunt end and that's how I empty the water out of my tank but when I want to empty the tank very fast I just unscrew the Schrader valve, and mind you, the Schrader valve can pop out and be gone forever. Got it. So we will let the tank drain, and it just drains really fast when you do it that way probably the most reasonable way to drain your tank well fastest like I said make sure you keep up with your Schrader valve because if you don't it will blow off and you will never find it again then you got to go to the tire store your Vance Auto parts store Vance Auto you know uh Auto Zone O'Reilly's and spend like eight dollars for another Schrader valve so now the tank is empty screw that back in because if you don't screw this back in and then you go to try to fill your tanks up, it's not going to fill. Because the air is going to come out just as fast as what is going in. Alright, make sure you put all your stuff back. And then we come back to the trunk to the fitting that we want to take care of. So all we're going to do, you take the BTC. I don't know how much you can see. Take the PTC, push it down. And then it should disconnect, but it might be it might be too much pressure on it. So I'm gonna take that one off. I'm trying to get y'all the best lighting I can here. But it's proving to be 
pretty difficult. So I'm gonna take that one loose and then take that one loose. What the hell is this? Oh, that's ice. <laughs> that's why my stuff don't be feeling in the morning because it freezes. And then we're gonna take this fitting If I can get it out. Oh, that thing is in there. Ooh. All right. So let me. Whew, that thing don't want to come out. All right. I'll just replace that line too. So let's just replace both of these. While we are here, why is this one not coming loose? All right, let's take this over and see if we can get this to come out. Cause I don't think I have another Y or a T or E with no tops and bottom. All right, let's see if we can get this out. It is not trying to. Oh, there we go. It is in there. All right. So we got it out. And I don't think I have another another T connector. So I'm going to take this and just cut it in half. And when you put them in the cutter, you want to make sure that the line is all the way down in that valley. And make sure everything looks straight as possible. And then simply just push and just make sure that your line is cut as straight as possible. So I'm going to take the longer line and push it into the top. And then this is going to be a line that goes to the rear. Let's get it back in the car. Let's fill the system back up and let's see if it still leaks. And don't forget to put your stuff back up so the next time you need it, you know where it is. All right. So, first, I'm going to connect my line there. So my line is connected back to my drain port on my tank. I'm gonna take the line from the second tank, hook it up there, and then down to my, my, uh, uh, my pressure release, which I think is 200 PSI valve, going down to the line that is under my daughter's car seat uh, to ultimately drain the tank. Now, while I'm here, I need to add some brake antifreeze into my tank. And I think what I may do is just add it because I have two tanks in my trunk. So I'm thinking if I add it to the top tank, it will probably just all flow down to, well, no, that's the drain. If I add it to the top tank, uh, I'll just add it to both. I'm going to take this fitting off there, and I'm going to take that fitting off there. Well, I'm going to take the PTC line off there, and this one here, or maybe I'll do that one and that one. And I'm going to put brake uh, antifreeze in here since it has been freezing up in the mornings. So let's do that real fast. All right, guys, so what I do is very simple. I have a turkey baster with some fuel line connected onto it. I'll take the air brake antifreeze, stick it in the bottle. Do I have enough in here? And it's probably way too much. 
Whoop, don't drip out. And then I'll take it. Ugh. And I take the line, I put it into the tank, and then I simply just let it go in slow so I don't spill it out. Now, when I do this in the winter time, uh, I do not, um, I don't empty my tank as often because every time I empty my tank, it is also going to empty out the antifreeze. But any water, ooh, like that water drop that's right there on my feet, and any water that's in there, oh, any water that's in there, oh, Jesus, any water that's in there should not freeze. So, for my top tank, you can see the PTC right there. I'm going to take my antifreeze, my air brake line, line antifreeze, and I'm going to just put the rest of it in there. Get in there. Like that. And then this is my line. <laughs> I will take my PTC, uh, push it in there, and I will take the other end. Push it uh, in there. And of course the lights fall. And then we are good to go. Uh, so now I'm gonna start the car up. Uh, I am going to let it fill up to 150. And I'm gonna see if that line is still leaking so i'll be back once it gets uh filled up and we are back and do you hear that well besides the exhaust rumbling do you hear that do you hear that do you hear that no you don't that's the sound of no leaks not nini leaks no leaks so we have fixed the problem with the leakage. So now I should be able to come out to a solid 140 out of 150 PSI instead of zero. I think my compressors shall thank me. And I think that's all I have for today, fellas and ladies. I think that is all that I have. I've changed the oil. I've hopefully uh, fixed the little knocking, ticking sound I had coming from this corner because that bolt was actually loose. And I fixed my leak. And as a bonus, I put air brake antifreeze in my tank. So hopefully next time it drops below 32 degrees, uh, my stuff won't, won't be froze up. So I think that is it for the day. Uh, since it's about 5 o'clock, I might actually try to clean my wheels because they are disgusting. So maybe I'll do that. I'll spend five minutes and just do a quick clean of my wheels because they're disgusting. But other than that, y'all know the motto, think, build, enjoy. If you got your phone, you watch the TV, go ahead and scan that QR code. Or if you also want to sub, hit the bottom right of the screen where it says subscribe. Click on that, hit subscribe. I appreciate you. Leave a comment what car you drive, what color, and the year. But until next time... Peace.